Welcome to Training Unleashed, the show that will help you design and deliver training that's off the chain and will make a difference. Now, here's your host, Evan Hackle. Hello, everyone, to another truly exciting episode of Training Unleashed. We have an incredible guest with us, a multi-time author. His name is Jeffrey Hazlett. He is the CEO of the C-Suite Network. I have been a member of this network almost from the beginning. And uh, I got to tell you something, it's great to affiliate with this network. He is a diker. He has written many, many, many books. Um, and his newest book is The Hero Factor, which I'm about halfway through with now. And like his other books, uh, you, you can't put them down. Um, Jeffrey, if you could quickly say hi. And then I want to, before I guess, before I do that, I just want to say to everyone listening, what we're going to talk about is going to be about you. It's going to be about you, your life, your career, how to make yourself more successful. And I think when you get done listening, you're going to say this is like some of the best time you've ever spent. And you're going to want to go to everyone else in your company and say, you ought to be listening to this podcast. You're going to go to your kids say, you ought to be listening to this podcast. I'm just putting a little pressure on you, Jeffrey. Um, and uh, <laughs> so anyhow, Jeffrey, why don't you, you know, quickly uh, introduce yourself and say hi and, and, and then maybe... Tell yeah, everyone sure. what the hero factor is and what it means to be a hero employee. Well, I appreciate it so much. It's so great to have it, and it's great to have you as part of our C-Suite Network, C-Suite Radio. Um, it's just a, you're a great show, great host. So, you know, the, this book um, and what we do to lead the Hero Club is all about, you know, li- business leaders um, who put people over profit. That, that, that we understand there's a, there's a tie-in to both, but it's really about bi- building a hero organization and how to transform an organization and create winning culture. And that's a big thing. What we find is that hero companies, those companies that, um, that have real values, and we'll talk about that, you know, values of understanding where you're going, what you're doing, how you're doing it, how it shapes everything that you do with the company, outperform in every single way. They, they make more money. They gross more revenue. They have happier, more satisfied employees. They have happier, more loyal customers, and they have vendors who want to do work with them. And and so we, this is one of the things that we found as I started working more and more with these hero CEOs, a club that was founded back in nineteen late nineteen nineties, and then it became part of the C suite network. That just it, it it called to me so so you know such a strong tie and saying come to me come to me come to me and and i wanted to know more about this hero leadership so i wrote this book to talk about how great leaders transform organizations and create winning cultures now you didn't hear me say ceos i said great leaders because you don't have to be a ceo to be a great leader i think that's so true and you know i know in my life and and witnessing there are certain people in certain organizations that do better that you know, perform. They're the go-to people, the people people respect, and sometimes, many times, lower in level than the people that actually have those roles. Okay. And that's really what I want to talk about: is how do you be that hero person or that hero leader in the company, whether what, regardless of your role, regardless of your title. Well, you, you know, in the, in the biggest in the the biggest thing that we've found, and it's very surprising, Evan. You might very well know this, but twenty nine percent or twenty eight, twenty nine percent of the people who work at a company don't know what the company stands for. <laughs> I got to tell you, I got to tell you, because as a consultant, it's like the first question when I interview employees and interview customers is, you know, in your own words, what's the vision of the company? And, and I would say to you, twenty six percent mighty low. I I'd go with eighty. Yeah, well, and you're probably right, and at least this is what we've been able to document. I don't know that everybody can articulate. They could probably say a little bit about it. You know, even when I was reading my own book and um, doing the audio version of the book, I had to say, here I am, the person that's writing about this phenomenon and how these companies are leading great cultures. And, you know, in fact, you know, a recent critic wrote that this is the hero factor picks up where good to great left off, which was just a great absolute quote to be able to frame about the book. But, but when I was doing the audio, uh, when I sit down and record it in the studio and I'm reading my own book, you know, into a microphone, I'm going, Oh my God, I'm not worthy. I'm not living up to everything I can. That's what you kind of find to be very unique about hero leaders is that they, they always feel they've got to improve. There's always continuous improvement, you know, adapt, change or die, so to speak. And so 
so we we question ourselves and so one of the things i did recently was sit down with my entire team and and say okay what are our real values here's what i've said in the past do is it is it is that what we need is that what we need to lead to is that what we want to be able to do and so therefore um you know we had a couple of days where we spent we spent around the you know the tables reworking our values and our our operating statements and how we wanted to 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 work with each other in terms of daily operating proce- procedures and it was just a really eye opening thing and changed a little bit of the way that we were that we were headed. And so that's the first realization is to be able to sit down and say, okay, what are your values? And then, and then, you know, have that call to leadership in terms of your values. Well, I, I I can tell you that from my point of view, living and breathing your values is the key. And every, every month at my company, somebody in the company leads a review of our mission, vision, and our values. Oh, that's awesome. And they, have to highlight actual things we do in the company for each value that mm-hmm. matches, which matches the value. Yeah, you, it's just interesting you say that because I'm about to to redo a workbook, a journal that I'm going to start giving to people that they can have. They can print it out themselves every single day. But t- that does that. I'd love to see your exercise on that. By the way, side note. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, 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 I actually, I could probably send you a video clip of it because it's cool. Oh, I'd love to see it. Yeah. The, you know, one of, the, thing, one of the, the things I put in the book was page 12. And on page 12, I actually outlined what's your hero factor. You know, what yeah. is the factor for your company? Where do you stand in terms of intensity of scale? And so what we did was we identified a number of books or a, num- a number of companies um, that we outlined. And so we say, hey, look, here's the hero companies they have strong values they value the people and they value profit and then there underneath there was a good co you know good operationally good hero intensity but you know the, the hero was above that and then way over to the left in terms of operational excellence we had you know a bottom liner strong operation but in need of hero help and then we had down in the lower right of the intensity scale you know struggling do-gooders you know strong they're strong heroes, but they need to need help with operations. I mean, they, they, they can't make a profit out of a wet paper sack, so to speak, <laughs> you know, and then below those were, were what I call the wannabe companies, you know, and they, they, they got a little of both, but not enough of either. And then way down on the end, way down at the bottom left-hand corner of that scale are those people I call the zeros or hopeless asshats, you know, <laughs> You know, and by the way, I picked that, you know, you know me, Evan, I, I, I'm, I'm known for a little salty language. I had to pick a word that I could get by all the censors so it wouldn't get you in trouble. And so that when I was doing interviews, it would be just enough to push the edge, but not enough to push it over by the censors. So, but, you know, and we know those kind of companies, we see them out there. You know, I just got to reading a great book um, called, uh, oh, what was it? Um, it was on Theranos. It was called Bad Blood. It was written by a reporter in the Wall Street Journal. And um, just an excellent book talking about how a company just didn't live its values, was just, you know, ch- cheated people, lied to people, and in the end probably caused people's deaths. And it's going to be interesting to see. I think the CEO and the, and the, and the other officer of the company are going to go to jail over this thing. Yeah, it's interesting. I was working with a company that was doing something and my, my belief was completely against their values. And I, I said to the CEO, one of your values is integrity. Yeah. Which by the way, I don't really consider a value. I consider it a given, yeah. but, but any, and I said, this doesn't seem to be with integrity. And he says, you're confusing integrity with transparency. You see, he says, we're just not being transparent. <laughs> and I'm like, Mm, oh, yeah, that, that, does, that doesn't that doesn't sit well. No, it doesn't sit well. And you know, in fact, I actually write about that. I talk about being transparent, and that's one of the key things. You have to be transparent. You need to be able to have the ability. You know, those of you who are listening here, as you work for a company, I if you if you worked with me, and I say with me, but you know, for me, because uh, I bought and sold over two hundred fifty companies in my career, twenty five billion in transactions, and 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 if I had the company, I was leading the company, working with you. Um, I would want you to be transparent. I would want you to raise your hand and say, ah, this isn't right, or I don't believe that. And at least we'd have a discussion about it. Doesn't mean I, I'm, I'm going to follow it, okay? I mean, I had somebody here today that did that, and, I, and then so we kind of pushed back on it. And we had a discussion, and we had a discussion because sometimes our first, our first 
our first statement isn't the right one. And, and, and usually my statement isn't the right one, but between the two of us, we can get to the right one. And, um, and I think that's important for business to have, but, but that's different than integrity. <laughs> you, you know, in trust, there's three factors in trust. Um, first is sincerity. You know, if I say I don't trust someone, the first thing is, are they sincere? And that gets back to your integrity point. Either you either are, or you aren't. And I'll grant somebody integrity or I'll grant them sincerity. But then I'll start judging them based on two other criteria. And one of those is reliability. Are they reliable? You know, and the next one is, um, are, are they, um, oh, geez, now I lost my train of thought. Competent. There we go. Sorry. The next one was competent. You know, you, you, with me, Evan, you know, I, I'm like, um, I'm like that dog in the movie up squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. So, <laughs> um, so bear with me, folks. I, I appreciate you sticking with me. Um, so, you know, are you competent in, in what you can do or delivering on your word or um, doing the things you say you're going to do? Well, you can find people who, you know, when I say I don't trust you, I can find people who are competent, but not reliable. You know, uh, they'll be late on every single time or, uh, or, you know, and I can find people who are reliable, but not competent. And I mean, they'll, they'll screw every time they bring it to me, they screw it up, you know, so I can, yeah. you, you can do those kind of things, but it, that sincerity or integrity, that's a game changer. That's a given. And if you don't have that, um, well, then you're, you're sliding the slippery slope into the asshat world. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, you know, one of the, the, the terms I'm using more and more is focusing out. Mm. And, you know, a lot of times we think and work, we focus about what do we have to do? What, what's in our plate and then when people come to us we don't sit back and say well what's on their plate and how could i be of help to them mm -hmm. and that when you start to focus out and when you start listening to people and getting why what they're asking you because you know, <laughs> you know i've worked in the corporate world where you know there have been people that literally are hiding information from me and playing all these games oh yeah, yeah. you know you don't you don't know that stuff you, you know, when you become known for that person that is that goes over and above is constantly looking to help and 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 sincerely help and, and thinking about the other person, you become a person that people really like, respect and want to work with. And that's how those people develop reputations. And then the, they start moving up in the organization. Um, yeah, well, I mean, there's an old saying, and I've said this many times, I've written about it, the more you give, the more you get. I'm, I'm a real believer in that most, you know, super fantastic leaders. And again, I'm not saying CEOs. So people pay attention. I'm saying leaders, you can be a leader, you can be a janitor and be a leader of the company. You know, so it, it's all about it's all about when to give and the more you give, the more you get. So when you see a piece of paper on the ground, you pick it up, you know, um, you, you see something that's not right, you speak up and then but then don't just bitch or moan about it. Okay. Um, but you can it's okay to complain as long as you have a solution for the complaint. You know, somebody came to me today in a big in a meeting. We had an operational meeting for one of the products that we sell. And, you know, they they were complaining about something, about what they anticipate something to be. And I and my, my next thing to them was just to have an alternative. Do you have another another offer? And they said, no. Then I said, then really, it, you're just bitching, you know. Um, so let's get, let's get, let's get beyond bitching and let's get into action. So what's your other offer? Don't just sit there and, you know, bitch about it. If you're going to complain, complain well, but here's my solution to fix it. And, um, and then there's a big difference. And I, I just think, you know, one of the really cool things that, that, you know, people can do inside the company is to take action and that you, you have the authority. Everybody seems to wait you know, in a lot of companies for, well, that's not my job. Well, yeah, it is. If you, if you live the values of the company, it is your job. Might not be your responsibility, yeah. you know, but it is your job. And it's, it's part of who you are. That's the culture. That's what you should develop and drink. You should be drinking the Kool-Aid of your values because then it doesn't stop you. You, you could be, you know, the person on the line who stops the entire production line because the quality isn't up to the, you know, to the values that you set as a company. That's awesome. You know, I've been in companies where we had, we had software and we were an integrator for software and, and computer component parts. And somebody raised their hand in a meeting and said, if I see something that's, that's being put together and packaged wrong, can I stop the shipment? Absolutely. You think we want to ship something out that's shitty, that doesn't work? Well, that's going to cause us more problems. Of course, wouldn't, wouldn't we rather have the breakdown now and, and, but yet deliver a quality product a day late? 
uh, rather than deliver them something that doesn't work. And now we got to ship it back, deal with it for three weeks or whatever it might be. Of course, we want you to do that. And, and you have the empower. So it's your job that you, you know, that's your, and then it, then of course, then that makes it their responsibility or, or at least driving it through the, the, the entire company. So being transparent, I think is real critical. And that gets back to your other point um, about this integrity thing. This is one of the things that's really another, another one I keep saying is one thing, but there, there's so many that people can see through it now, like never before. You know, you used to be able to hide behind the corporate veil or behind the company. Uh, you can't do that anymore. You know, um, you know, you just can't, you know, brand is nothing but a promise delivered and everybody sees your promise every single day. And now with social media and the way that they can speak up and speak out, you're going to be uncovered and they're going to see that you're not living in integrity. If that's the case, there's a difference between the two. So. We're so glad you're listening to this episode of Training Unleashed, brought to you by Tortal Training. The difference between Tortal Training and other online training companies is we're primarily a training company with technology, rather than a technology company that does training. Want to find out more? Just go to Tortal.net. That's T-O-R-T-A-L, Tortal.net. I like to think of myself as a person within an organization as my own brand that, you know, I'm part of this bigger brand, but I am a brand Absolutely. I, I represent. You are. Totally. You know, when I see you, I see your company. When I see the company, I see you. And I think that goes for everybody in the company. So you, you can, when I was working as a CMO of Eastman Kodak, when they saw me, they saw the company because I spoke for the company. I represented, man, I had yellow. I wore yellow underwear, whatever, you know, <laughs> I, cause that was it, man. I wanted to be, I, I am Kodak. You are Kodak. And, and so therefore you're the company. So a brand again is nothing but a promise delivered. And I, it's, and I really truly believe this for the CEOs, but I believe for everybody working in the company, you can only be as good as your, as your lowest common denominator. So it behooves me to continue to weed out the people inside our company that, that don't want it to rise to the, to be the best. And, and by the way, if you're a really great leader, you're looking for that. You're looking for people who aren't doing their jobs. You're, you're talking to people and you're being transparent about it. This, this guy isn't living up to the, to our standard. And, and it's not, it's not saying you're throwing somebody under the bus. It's just being real transparent and honest about it. You know, that's the kind of thing. That's the leadership you want, man. That's what creates, that's what creates winning cultures. That's what transforms organizations is by being trans, by doing it, a lot of different pieces to it, but tra being um, transparent by, by being diverse, by having lots of different people who serve in different roles and have different personalities. And some of them are more anal and some of them are more creative and some of them don't, you know, they just, that they, they will run through a wall no matter what you say. Um, you know, and then at the same time, it's real important for everybody to pick a side to say, this is what we're going to be. And I don't, and I don't care whether you're a, you're a, you're a bottom liner or, you know, or you're a hero or a good co pick a side, decide what kind of company you're going to be, and then get to that as, as fast as you possibly can. I would prefer you all to be hero companies. That's why we've got the hero club. And, uh, but if you can't, you know, at least pick a side. I love to, that's, I, I think in today's society, that's a, that's a, a pretty critical component of what we have to do. And by the way, Evan, since I, um, you put the quarter in, you get to go for the full ride here, <laughs> you know, um, anyone that wants a free assessment on, on your own company, you can go to the hero or hero factor book.com hero factor book.com. And I have a free assessment for you. You can download it you can take it, use it any way you want. Give us feedback on it. Uh, Cause I'm sure there's lots of ways we can improve it. That's, that's, that's part of being a hero is uh, constantly changing and improving. So hero factor book.com and you can get a free assessment. Love to have it. Have you have it? I think that, that that's a, that's a great offer. Uh, I think, I think it's a, a really good offer. Um, you know, could you talk for a little bit, about just the sense and feeling of pride that a, a person has in an organization and the importance of, of that self-integrity to just, you know, when you leave work, regardless of your company, regardless of how they do or don't support their values, that you as your own hero 
that sense of pride you have by being a hero? Well, you're, you're valued. If you have values and you live the values, then you're valued. And so by being more valued, you feel like you're part of a bigger thing. You feel like you're on a mission. You think you feel you're on a conquest. You feel, you know, you're on a crusade, right? And, and what a great way to live your life. So, so every day you, you know, look, I can't wait to go to sleep and sleep as fast as I possibly can so I can get up in the morning and go to work. Okay. Yeah. I would, I want everybody else to feel the same way. And it, and it's so exciting sometimes when I'm sitting here in the office, whether I'm in New York or I'm in South Dakota or, or in one of our other offices is to see people, you know, p- pitching in and doing it and, yeah. you know, not punching the clock. They're, they're, they're really, they'll do it. And that's awesome. And, um, you know, that's really cool. And so if you're, so if you have values, you live the values, then you're valued End of story. That's cool. Yeah. And when you feel, and when you, when you have that, you have this feeling, you feel better. You oh, every, feel, every day. Yeah. You enjoy your job. And, you know, one thing, I mean, so, you know, like you, I give speeches and people come up and say, well, I love everything you have to say, but you know, my company is the antithesis of what you just described. You know, how do I change that? And, and I just say, it starts with you. Yeah. It's you know? one person at a time. It's yeah. again, you know, it was one of the greatest pieces of advice I ever got. Evan was, was, was my former CEO at Kodak. We, he and I didn't always get along. I, I respected him, but we didn't always get along. And, um, and that's okay. Um, you know, we were, we were friends, but not real friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, um, you know, one of the things he said, it, he taught me is that, and I said this earlier, you, you know, I am Kodak, you are Kodak, she is Kodak, they are Kodak, and collectively, that's what we are. But it's all of us. So if someone doesn't give a, you know, you know what, then that looks bad on the rest of us and pulls us all down. So I want those people, I don't want them around. So, you know, I, I work hard about, you know, getting people out that don't want to be there, just leave. And, uh, and that's just being transparent. You know, I, I want the diversity. I want diversity. I, I want people. I don't want people who just say yes to me. You know, I want people who, who challenge me. And, and I have a couple, I have a couple of those people who do a really good job of that, you know, or my partner who, you know, uh, yeah. Carl Post, um, Carl calls me many days and says, Jeff, you're not going to want to hear this. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, but you know, it, and it, it's not that I, I dread his calls, but I appreciate that he has the honesty and the transparency to have those discussions with me. Well, I, I honestly, I honestly believe that it's going to be uh, funny when you hear the thing, but I think the biggest gift you can give anybody is honesty. Oh yeah. You know, because people are so pleasing. Yeah. You know, I want to please you. I want you to be happy. I'm, I'm just going to compliment you. I'm just going to say nice things. And, and, and it's, that's, outside of integrity and, you know, sharing honestly with people is, is a true gift. Yeah. Um, it's not, and by the way, it's not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. It'd be, it'd be better if everybody did it, then we can get to that level. But, you know, but we do still have issues where people just don't do it. They, again, you know, and I have, a, I have some team members that are like this. Well, I don't want to throw somebody under the bus or they, they talk about they, they said, you know, and I always, my, my friend, I get so ticked off. I say, who's they? Who is they? Is there a they? I don't, I don't see a they anywhere in a W-2 form. So somebody please tell me who's they, you know? And, and so I keep them at them until, until they give me a name. And I, you know, great. Thank you for saying that. Appreciate that. Now, that wasn't so hard, was it? Well, what are you going to do to them? Well, not that we're going to have a discussion. Let's get to the bottom of this. You know, let's go figure out how we do it, you know? Um, I, I will you know, it's because sooner or later, you we're going to figure it out. And I, and it's just like getting bad news. I'd rather get bad news sooner than later. Yeah. And, and, and what I say to people that, you know, sometimes fail and, and, and that it happens is I'm happy you're trying. Yeah. Well, you're always going to fail. Let's be clear. Well, yeah. I mean, you can't, <laughs> yeah. no one, no one, you know, <laughs> no one hit bats a thousand. Yeah. And you're you're it, always good. You're going to fail. So, yeah. so it's about winning faster, not losing faster. Yeah. So, so if, if we all know we're going to fail and in business, you're going to fail in well, most things. The first time you, you, you pitched a baseball, you look like an idiot, right? The first time you, 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 you tried to play music, you sounded horrible. Okay. You don't become a maestro by playing a lot, you know, a lot of you until you play a lot of bad notes. That's, a, that's yeah. the nature of the deal. So, so, so I think that's important that we just have to keep pushing. And by the way, you know, this, most of us in terms of what we do for business, if we do make a mistake, no one's going to die. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you have a saying about a business in an airplane. 
and I love it because what I, that I'm flying the airplane as I'm building it or I'm building yes, it. As I'm your, flying. Your, yeah. Your, yeah. I tell people that all the time, you know, cause everybody thinks the business, the, the you know, it's supposed to be perfect. Pfft, are you kidding me? You know, and, and if you're an entrepreneur, you know, some days, you know, you, you wake up, you're ecstatic and five minutes later, you're depressed, you know, and then you're back up again and you're down, you know, you know, being an entrepreneur is the only job you quit a 40 hour a week job to go work 120. So yeah. Um, yeah, you, re- you referenced the book, good, uh, uh, good, is, uh, good to great. Yeah. And, you know, in, in the theory of the book is that uh, good is the enemy of great. And and I love the book. It's one of my it's one of it's, my favorite. It's books. a classic. Jim did a great job on them. Yeah, really did. But I have a saying, which is uh, perfect is the enemy of good. Yeah. Uh, and that, you know, so many people spend so much time trying to get to perfect. They can't get anything done Yeah. because perfect. You may never get to perfect could be 10 times the effort of good. You're better off starting at good and then moving to great than you are waiting for perfect. Yeah, and, totally. That's a great, great way of framing. I a lot of times I tell people, especially because I have people come to me, Evan, as you all know, um, who come to me with ideas all the time, and they come to me with this, and they have this thing, and they have this thing, and 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 you know, and, and I always say, an idea without implementation is just air. <laughs> and you know, if you don't go do it, even if do it badly, it's just air. And and so, it, you know, I had somebody. I was at a big conference up in Canada. A big, it's called the Fireside Conference. It's for entrepreneurs, and I was there. And this guy came over and told me about how he's doing this and doing this and doing this and doing this. And so while I was doing it, I grabbed my phone and I started looking for it. And I said, "I don't see anything." He said, "Well, that's no, no, no. I'm starting it. That's what we're going to do. That's how it's going to react." I said, "Well, until you do it, you, all you got, all you're talking about to me, dude, is there. You know, it's all that's all that is. Till till I see you actually put up a website. Till I see you actually charge customers. You get them to buy this way." And he was running a sports betting business. And, and I just said, until you show me that behavior is captured, you ain't got nothing. Yeah. And, and that, by the way, I wasn't trying to be mean to the guy. I was trying to be honest with the guy. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I don't, you know, don't go out and raise money and spend a lot of money on things you think you're going to do. You know, go fly that plane and build it while you're flying and keep going. Yeah. And, and, and if the plane is absolutely perfect and, and beautiful, break it and start over. Yeah, then you yeah, you you need a bigger engine, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Need more capacity, you know, you need more fuel. Um exactly right. Yeah, no, it's uh, compl- yeah. Uh, complacency is. Well, so, we'd still be we'd still be flying gliders or those Kitty Hawk uh, things the Wright brothers came up that if we just stopped when once we started learning how to fly, right? Yeah. But well, I I don't I have no idea if this quote's true and so many things aren't, but somebody said like in 1900 the the so the head of the patent office said that there'll be no new inventions we might as well close um, <laughs> i have no idea but so, i mean both of us are or let's face it not the youngest people in the room and you know we sit back in our childhood and you couldn't have dreamed of what you know at least i could not have dreamed of the internet when i was in high school you know i love the internet it seems so obvious now but uh but back then it wasn't and and your business and your life and whatever you do 10 or 15 years from now is not going to look like it looks like today. Uh, well, but th- think about all the things that have been invented and the innovations that people have brought forth. Like, you know, who would have thought that you, you know, fit uh, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, I don't know, maybe five that you would, you would rent out your house and let someone sit on your couch naked, you know, and uh, <laughs> meaning, meaning Airbnb, you know, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, no. think about this, right. <laughs> you know, uh, I, there's no way I'm doing that because I'm not renting out someone's house and I'm not letting them rent my house. But but there are people that do that. And who would have thought that you if I would have told you 15 years ago, you're going to be renting your house to complete strangers who will be able to potentially go through all of your stuff, touch your most intimate things and you will and you will let them do it. You would have thought I was nuts. Or how about I w- they will pick up your daughter at 1 a.m. in the morning and they don't know who they are. And even when if they've been out a little drinking and having a good time, they're going to take your daughter home. I'm like, no yeah. way, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. No, it's 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 crazy. Yeah. Um, I I do use Airbnb. And they <laughs> constantly send me a thing saying, "Well, you're going to be gone. What are you doing with your house?" Uh, but I, I I won't rent out my own house, um, just because it's it's you know it, the people that do it because you don't do it, they really clean the house. So it's designed for people to be in there. And there are a lot of people that manage properties that do nothing sure. but the Airbnb. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in, in, you know, in a living, breathing house, 
like mine, where I have a lot of company constantly, there's just no way. I mean, it's, it, but having said that, um, um, the world's going to keep changing. Who knows what's going to be, who knows what's going to be next? Yeah, I don't have a clue, uh, but I'm looking for them. And I just know that it's going to be better than it is today. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to embrace it. And that's to me, you know, my mother constantly gives me a hard time because I use my cell phone. And I do this and that. And, do, and, and my mother barely does email. And I go, this is how I stay alive. Right. How, how can I ignore technology? How can I not be on Twitter? How can I not be on Instagram? How can, you know, you know, how can I just say no to advancement? I, I you know, I, you know, green or growing or ripe and rotting. That's sort of the, the, the theory I have. Um, Jeffrey, we're, we're running out of time here. So let me wrap it up by asking you if you could share one piece of advice with our audience, what would that be? Get in the game, get in the game and pick a side, decide what you want to be and who you want to be and go do it. There's, there's nobody getting in front of you other than yourself. So make that happen as a, whether you work in the company or you're the leader of the company, meaning you're the, at the very top of the company, um, make it pick a side. And decide is what is it going to stand for? What are your what are your walk away values? What are the things that you just say I won't give into? And this is how we're going to do it. And then and then go do it. I mean, it's just it's literally no different, no no more simple than that. Yeah. No, I I, I, I totally I totally agree. Be who you're going to be. Yeah. You know, don't just go through life. Don't go to work. Just just getting through the day. Go to life. Go through life making a difference. Uh, I think it makes uh, good, very good advice. Lastly, again, the hero, uh, the hero book.com. Give that one more time. It's a, a hero factor book.com hero factor book.com and get a free assessment. And you know, whether you buy the book or not, I love to have the assessment and then go check out the hero CEO club.com. If you're an, if you're an entrepreneur, owner, founder, CEO of a business, come, come check us out. We'd love to have you being a part of that organization. I, I will say, having been an avid reader of your books, every one of them is inspiring and every one of them has great insight and tips. I love your audio books because, I, A, I know you and I listen to you and you have such an inspiring voice. So I would encourage the audio books, but any of the books, uh, they would be great, great investments and well worth your time. Uh, Jeffrey, so glad to have you as a guest on the show. Thank you. Well, thank you. This has been Training Unleashed, but it doesn't stop here. Just go to trainingunleashed.net to subscribe to the show. That way, you'll never miss an episode, and you'll be well on your way to delivering training programs that are off the chain. We'll talk to you next time on Training Unleashed.